Right, hello everybody, welcome to match, well, it's match, it's week three, it's my second match in Blood Bowl Super League, up against Dior, um, who has really, really nice build actually, Claw Mighty, Chalf Blocker, um, four guards total, sure hands, um, he's won the only game he's played in the league, so have I, but uh, Dior's, you know, probably going to play better than me, <laughs> at least I'm honest. So this is going to be tricky. I'm just going to try and get a draw. I'm just going to battle for the draw. That is my... Um, that is... That is my... Uh, my goal is to is to scrape a draw against a superior team and coach. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we shall see. Alright, well... Um, Snow's shit for dwarves, like a blizzard is shit for dwarves because they're so slow, but it's also shit for bulls as well. So he is receiving, that's just, I wanted to receive and just, uh, you know, score. Now, it's more likely going to be down men for the second half. And being down men is going to make, uh, it's going to make it hard. <laughs> GLHF muted. <laughs> BLGF. <laughs> I'm really hoping for the 1 1 draw. That's my dream. My dream is a 1 1 draw, right? Sorry, I'm going to be bit shit with the chat here. Because, um. Because obviously I'm going to have to focus and, you know, it's a lot easier when you've got somebody talking to chat and everything and talking about the game. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to focus on the game here. So yeah, because this is, I mean, this is hard, isn't it? Dials. Brilliant, I get fucked. No, I'm not dead though. Dio is brilliant, so, um, this is going to be tough, you know, like. I was obviously very lucky in the previous game versus Andy Deva, who is also brilliant. It was really good to be able to just concentrate on the game and not think about anything um, streaming-wise. I may well have run out of the time that, uh, where the clock skipped 12 seconds, speaking of which. Thanks, PC. I do like a bit of goo look. Would you like to come into the commentary box, PC, and save me from having to, having to, having to talk? <laughs> oh, do you know what I'll do? I'll put, I'll put the, I'll, I'll put my headset on and put the sound on, and then, oh, glorious! Right. Okay. Bear with me, the, the sand will go off temporarily here. There we go. And I shall go into the, the commentary. So that we might get... <laughs> <Stuffy. laughs> yeah, Volk, yeah. I mean, this is okay, though, right? This is. Oh, wow, he gets the pick up. Look a dog. Luckiest man in Blood Bowl. Disgusting. It's going to do a couple of safe moves there.
tem uma follow. Oh baby, what a chip! Instant apple. Oh, but it's a it's a miss next. It's a miss next. But it's guard. But it's miss next. But it's guard. Does he even have an apple? He does have an apple. Oh baby, what a maneuver! Only took thirty seconds though. This is Rez, yeah. Absolutely outplayed. <laughs> that was some great play by me, wasn't it? Wow, what a I'm real I'm so good at Blood Bowl sometimes. I mean, I played that so much better. So you know, Dionysi in there, he blitzes with Claw Mighty Blow, doesn't make a removal. I make with only mighty blow and get and Kaz the guard. I mean, that's just that's just superior play, isn't it? <laughs> Good afternoon, Anarian. <coughs> with fifty-six viewers, there's, there's doubtful any ladies <coughs> are here. You've missed my uh, death on stream, Jawsus. No, no, you haven't. You've turned up just in time for that. Hello, Jawsus. Yeah, you've, uh, you haven't missed your wrestler in the JFW. Um, <laughs> he's been, he has been completely MIA for about six months, but um, he just made a return the other week, funnily enough. What you've missed is the Blood Bowl Super League, which, ooh, we need a, we need a, we need a blitz command from a. Uh, from a, uh, not, you know, uh, an EAB command like Blitz for BBSL, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, like that, but for it, for, for the other one, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Right. So I've got to, I've got to worry about over here, really. He could Blitz, then he could block. Really concerned about the bulls coming over here. At least I've got three guards over here. Where are Blitz the guard there? Like just to hit with mighty blow or not? Like then he can punch him as it is, and he can punch him with another guy in there. Then needs another guy in there though to get that punch. I'd really like to punch him, I think. See, this is why I shouldn't be streaming. This is why, you know, the token has just fucked me there. Fuck off. Right, I'm not, right, I'm just gonna turn off the thing and stop talking. Sorry, I just can't handle it right now. I feel like I should have joined a minute ago. Um, yeah, all that talking there, Jim, just absolutely rinsed you with time. <laughs> that was for right. the day, my Jim is way. Thanks, guys. Right, <laughs> right. yeah. Help me. Jim, let's talk more Blood Bowl. <laughs> oh, oh God. The problem is you, you don't want to be that guy that points that out, do you? You know, because, you know, fair play and all that. Um, yeah, I don't give a shit. I can be that guy if you don't want to be, but you did. Hurrah. 
Yeah, a- after. You, you, I, I was watching the timer go down from 10 and Jim had moved one player, <laughs> which is really bad. <laughs> It is, but nothing is uh, lost at this point. We're still in a very good defensive shape in front of this uh, Chaos yeah. Dwarf team. Yeah, ironically, with the snow and, and the chip, Dio's not going to push too hard early doors, is he? So, yeah, you're right. And it was, well, it was I mean, no Dio also doesn't want to... He doesn't want to get... For a start, Dio doesn't ever seem to want to push early um, with the uh, more control-based races. But secondly, yeah, you're right. He's a piece down, and the last thing he needs is this team cut in half. Always very easy to go with, say... One dwarf, two bulls, and the hobgoblins. And the problem with that is that the bulls are fairly controllable in a NAF style. Yeah. Uh, the hobgoblin's incredibly vulnerable, obviously. And a chip down, you, the last thing you need is one of those hobgoblins going off, too. He made the right decision not using the Apo on, on that um, guard chorf, didn't he? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought the consensus was on MNGs or perms or death um, in NAF format. You probably don't gamble your apple. Oh, it, it, it definitely is. If before that I'd had a KO, I may have used it on that, particularly if it was the Claw Mighty mm. um, or one of the Bulls. Uh, on a badly hurt, it goes in straight away, particularly in the first half. Of course it does. In the second half, yeah, maybe in then if you've still got it, you keep it for a KO. But yeah. some 50 50s are probably worth taking. And in a matchup where having a decent amount of guards to face the Dwarf Guard is good, I would have probably risked that 50 50 that time. Yeah, um, I, I, I'd be I'm, happy about it, but yeah, I'd probably have yeah. taken the risk. Yeah, I was I was actually ironically 50-50 about it. I wasn't sure whether it would have been an impulse decision if I was in that position. You know, I, I would have either pressed the button or not, and I wouldn't have sort of thought to myself, oh, I've just made the wrong decision either way. Well, lots of people have realised that I've played everything I have to play on the record, and now we're repeating some stuff from the start. Um, I do think you've got to... Sometimes, if you're behind and you're in a position where you feel you need to get lucky, do things that have possible lucky outcomes. Yeah. So with a chip that's put you behind in terms of equity, mate, um, then perhaps you need to think, okay, then I need to see if this gets worse or gets better, because right now it's already quite bleak. Um, and usually Dia is quite good at assessing those equity shifts. I Clearly he disagrees with me, but I think that 50-50 gamble on getting that dwarf back for the second half was worth taking. The slight flip side of that is that this dwarf build isn't very NAF standard. Um, Jimmy clearly agrees with me that uh, you can usually do okay against these other strength teams with four guard. Um, six is obviously better, five is better, but it is pretty usually standard. And having both the block ball carrier and the mighty blow piece is a little bit of a luxury to help deal with elves and more mixed races. Well, you so, mean all the elves that landed in Division A? <laughs> yeah, all of those elves. <laughs> so this build isn't particularly strong at other dwarves, unless they happen to have exactly the same build as you, obviously, or other strength-based races. I mean, orcs and things. You know, you, yeah, two more guard would be so useful there. Um, lots of people make the point your ball carrier shouldn't be hit, so why put block on him? Uh, it's also so that you can be responsive with it, so that you can deal with people <clears throat> that are coming through. I mean, these one of these bulls... Yeah. You know, that was exactly, ironically, in my ball. human team, uh, PC, that was exactly why I gave my throw a block. Yeah. So he could be slightly more um, uh, sort of resilient and responsive in case I needed to use him in a blitz capacity. You uh -huh. know, there was it was a 50-50 whether I went guard on a catcher or even bludge on a catcher. And ultimately, it's choices, isn't it? You know, um, the consensus, I was leaning heavily towards guard on a catcher because guard wins games, but... You know, and then I thought, nah, do you know what? I, I, it was actually McNaughton's fault, to be perfectly honest. Uh, McNaughton, I went I went through the build with McNaughton, who knows Blood Bowl a little bit. And, yeah, we, we decided on the thrower with block. And yeah, I like your build. I, I mean, I personally don't skill big guys, but if I'm going to... The human ogre, ogre is probably the one that gets the most likely for me to put a skill on him. Yeah, well, um, obviously, given, in, given how well he Blood played Bowl last too, game... <laughs> My ogre was trash last game. Just, yeah, I know, I watched. Just a sec. Oh, that's a um, nice hit on a hobo there. So, Jim finally managed to gain access to a hobo. Yeah. Um, it seems to me like Dio's shape is worsening. I, I was, yeah. was going to use disintegrating, off, um, yeah, but that's, I think that's a bit harsh. <laughs> it, it's certainly... Well, it's kind of two chips, because uh, with the stun as well, 
I know there's a stunned yeah. dwarf, but it's, I mean, that thins the numbers and it limits where it can go next turn. He's in a spot of bother here, isn't he? Um, he Jim, is. Yeah, Jim, he, you know, I, I know Jim, Jim was all very self critical when he um, obviously chipped that guard chorf, but hey, that's Blood Bowl, isn't it? You've got to capitalize when, when Nuffle, um, strokes you <laughs> when nothing grants you kind dice you've got to capitalize on oh, it absolutely and it, i mean it is a brutal game so when it does don't don't look that gift horse in the mouth but celebrate yeah. it it's supposed yeah. to come to both sides it will happen against you in some games um, which it has here dear i mean in terms of the pure blocking you wouldn't expect to be in this situation with two off field to zero so far but you are um, and he's a fairly resilient guy so he knows that it doesn't matter what's happened what matters is what's happening next yeah and he's got to find a way out of this situation. Now, there is the advanced Hobgoblin, and the bulls are fairly quick. I, I really don't like neither having break tackle. I mean, it leads to a situation like this, where one of the ones, you, if the ball does suddenly try and move sides into an area with not much cover, you know, two Hobgoblins can come. But if the other bull could break tackle off and join you, that would be so much stronger, so much more useful, and so much more likely to leave some dwarves behind. I got to admit, I'm not a fan of sure hands on the bull centaur. Don't get me wrong. When a bull centaur's when a bull centaur's carrying the bull, it's great. It's it's absolutely brilliant. But I can't say I'm a fan uh, of, uh, in in this format, especially you know building a bull centaur as a bull carrier. It's it's debatable anyway, isn't it? You know, but yeah, hugely. Um, I don't mind carrying on a bull. Against some races, it's probably quite sensible. They theoretically can move nine. That's great. Their strength four. That's great. Yeah. Um, but how much more utility would that piece uh, would that piece be with block? It does mean you need to risk the pickup. But sailor V, if you're desperately worried about it, go for it with a hobgoblin. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a, a little bit of a dead skill. I mean, it, it is brilliant. Maybe again a huge gamble. But if you end up at the top end of tournaments, you're up against wood elves and things that are going to come in and try and strip your ball. Yeah. But then, if you don't have block, that's it's less dice. Obviously, a push and strip is easier to get. But putting, say, block on one bull, break tackle on the other, or a guard and a break tackle, I think is probably pretty strong. I know the uh, the England player, um, Gegster, plays a lot of tabletop, and uh, he once said to me when we're talking about exactly this, what you put on the bull centaurs on a NAF style chaos dwarf team. Uh, his opinion was to break tackle. He said the thing he fears in bulls is their their mobility. Yeah. Um, so yeah. keeping them mobile is is so key. So Diaz managed to get the ball back nice and central, uh, and it is on a fast piece. Though in snow, you don't want to risk those go for it. Even with the short feet cover, they've become one in nines, which is so bleak, as any Amazon or stunty coach will tell you. I was trying to, I was trying to, I was just in my head then, I was just debating whether the snow is worse for Jim or Dio. I, I it's got to be worse for Jim, isn't it? Ah, I mean, ever so slightly, but as I said, one of the advantages of the Bulls is that possibility of going three extra spaces and slightly mm. robbing them of that makes them a little more ordinary. Yeah. Um, because then there's nothing on the Chaos Dwarf team that can outpace the Dwarf team. But yes, obviously with the Hobgoblins, they are a little bit quicker, a little bit more responsive. Um, and the Bulls bringing a bit of strength, strength with that same speed. So Jim just trying to hem this Hobgoblin and keep this drive under control and centralised. And I think it's in a, I mean, Jim's in a great spot here. He's got it. He's in a great shape. He's got a yep. great shape right now, isn't he? It's really, really nice. And to go either way, there's, there's such early problems in getting down that side and it leaves so many pieces... Yeah. still to be dealt <clears throat> with. So does Dio have to start panicking and think about getting over the LOS here? Um, yes, I, th I mean, he think he does, because again, he just can't can't really be relying on those uh, go for it's in snow. No. Because they're not reliable. I mean, you can do one or two if you really have to, but you ideally don't want to. And that means the bull needs to be at least one, if not two spaces over the line of scrimmage at the end of this turn, so he has to push forwards. Jim, of course, really doesn't have to score. The expectation of scoring is on the drive. Um, so if he blocks this, it's fine. It's a yeah, good Jim, position. Jim's, Jim's absolutely not looking for the, the score here, is he? He's uh, Oh, there we go. Plus, he's got bench. He's got nothing. Oh, terrible time for dub skulls. 
one of the nice things about this shape is even if he advances, it's then a dodge to get off. Now, he may have tried that 4+, plus, knowing he needs the space, but he can't do now, and he's hugely exposed to this Slayer. Yeah, I, I hate that, but I don't know what other options Dio had. No. You know, it's, it's easy to be critical of something, isn't it? But Dio was in trouble. Um, and like you said earlier, sometimes you've got to go, you've got to play risk, haven't you? You've yeah. got to go high yeah. risk, you know, because you've got also, no I mean, choice. He's, he's fairly confident that now, in this position, the Dwarves are very unlikely to score back on this drive. So he's looking at, do I score or do I not? And hence, yeah. he has to take a risk with score as a, a possible and realistic outcome. However, I'm not sure this is it. Um, it seems fairly simple for the... Oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. But it's fine, because it was a one in nine. This is the dwarf now blocking that I would have blocked with. Yeah, that would have been the first one, wouldn't it? And all I need is a push, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if not, I'll find a different way of solving it. And now I've got the hobgoblin here. Again, I need the push. I can't take it both down there. But the push came, and now I've got easy access to at least one die. Um, Do you, do you, do you hit the hobo first? I probably do, just because it's, you know, yeah. for shits and giggles, and I've got a mighty blow that will be hitting it. Um... I suppose the other possibility is to say no and uh, slayer it in that direction with possible follow-up hits afterwards. And that's probably the safest, depressing as that is. But it's yeah. all okay. I mean, if I take it from that angle, I've got to put the runner in behind. Okay, no, we're just going with the... So he went for the 4D option there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He went, yeah, yeah, which, which is fine, fine, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> oh no, the mighty road already moved. Okay, so it would have been a hit with that one. No, in that case, that hit back is much stronger. Tell you what, he might have a score on here. He might he, now, yes. He needs, to, he needs to roll dice, of course, but... Well, I mean, if he makes the pickup, he can get out around the hobgoblin and get himself into range, and he's pushed yeah. up a second scoring threat. Yeah, yeah. No, this is very, very nice from Jim. Yep, taking full advantage of that now. Has he got the nerve? Just slash up that left-hand side, mate. Give yourself a second option. No, he's coming back into the defended position. Okay, so he's going to settle for knowing he's stopped the score, which actually he had done anyway, and dropping the ball somewhere where the, uh, dark, the Chaos Dwarves can't get it back. That's oh, fine. I, I, don't, I don't know about but, that. I think I'd have been... Well, I, I know I'd have been rowdier than that. I would have probably pushed my runner. Because um, realistically... There was no way that runner was going to get hit, was there? Well, yeah, no, there is. I mean, if you push up the left, then there's a one die. The uh, the downed Chaos Dwarf with guard stands up, and then the Hobgoblin gets one die to push off the Mighty Blow Dwarf. And then that yeah. brings a Chaos Dwarf yeah. blocker to hit the ball on one die. Um, it, it, because of the snow, you can't push up the right-hand side. But I'd still have done it, frankly. Um, yeah. Just because there's absolutely no threat of him getting it back and scoring. And with both the bulls down, that's still a one die that that dwarf would have to have done. Yeah. Well, after my so, game with the Halflings PC, I'm in no position to call someone out for playing conservatively. <laughs> <laughs> Although no revolts did not help. <laughs> no. But it was dropping the ball. I mean, when it when you did the withdrawn offense to some degree, you know, you dropped the ball back, basically. It was not the same thing. Um just that one other stupid. bloke standing yeah. next to him. No, it was fine to do it. Just put one other bloke standing yeah. next to him. And yeah. then they can't get a one die. It's, then they get two reds no matter what. We've all had it, haven't we? Where the moment you click end turn, you think, bollocks. What have that I just does, done yeah, there? That doesn't look safe <laughs> at all. Oh, no. Why did I do that? Particularly in one minute. That's yeah. Yeah. almost... Because I, I felt like, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, it's a no-win scenario against Flings, isn't it? If you beat him, everybody's like, yeah, you beat Flings. You know, if flings draw against you or God help you beat you, then, you know, it's just an awful look. And Anarian, it shouldn't be an awful look because Anarian is probably arguably in the conversation for at least top 10 blood bowlers to do it, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I felt I played pretty well. Oh, hello. I thought you did. Yeah, I mean, this is, I didn't understand that. Uh, Dio turned down a 50% chance of getting two yeah. die on this blitzer with his blitz after he dodged the hobgoblin out and i felt that I, I mean i well i suppose you do go with that blitzer but i i didn't hate the four plus from jimmy in return with his beard 
yeah. uh, to get two die and move that hobgoblin, or even just blitz with the blitzer, and I then think, just um, run up that flank did. and throw it next turn. But yeah. it's odd for Dio to turn down a fifty percent. I know he didn't have a reroll, knowing yeah. that Jimmy had the same fifty percent, and he did have a reroll. It was destined uh, to fail, wasn't it? And you know, Captain Hindsight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and mean, I mean, in snow, that was still a long, long way from a touchdown. But uh, yeah. I mean, Jimmy can feel slightly agreed there. That wasn't one in nine he failed. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I preferred the 75% dodge off with reroll um, is that it didn't have a go for it involved, and uh, it put other material there which was shielded where my runner would have gone to before throwing the ball to the blitzer. Um, Still, Jim's got to, you know, at half time he's got to consider this mission accomplished, isn't he? You know, absolutely. And the angle you'd have pushed the hobgoblin at meant that there was more space for the blitzer to get up that wing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. He stopped the drive. Um, the maximum that the Chaos Dwarf are going to be at is 11, but, you know, there's 50% that that Hobgoblin isn't coming back. Uh, that's a nice position to be in. I mean, it'll probably come back. That's how I always think about it. But at least I've got a shot of being up in numbers with the ball in hand for the second half. Yeah. So a lovely defensive shape. He uh, he put the pressure on Deer, took the risk, didn't work. I do think Jim could have been a tiny bit more ambitious, but, you know, he's in a very strong position. And if he'd lost that runner trying to do it, Actually, it's fine because he's got another one on the bench, but it, I can understand why he didn't. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. It's evil. It's one of them, isn't it? Either way is is good. Yeah. You know? Um, Speaky little bull chip here uh, would be quite nice. <laughs> Just say Yeah, it would be, be lovely. <laughs> but um, that, yeah, it also leaves here a two die on another chorf. Yeah. With the mighty blow. Still not very likely to chip it, but yeah, you've got to try. Now, there is a cheeky foul on here if he fancies it. Takes a hobgoblin hit first, of course he does with his blitz. That's a uh, got to be done. Let's get that AB7 smacked. No joy. Now, he's got the spare number. Is he putting the... No, he, he's not putting the foul in. I may well have just dropped a quick foul on that ball. Especially with 12 players. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I think going to, this, going to the second half with 11 and an apple because I'm probably using it on a KO at this point anyway. Um, I'd have dropped the boot in on the bull. Just yeah. rolled another set of dice, seeing if I got yeah. even luckier. Use the runner as an extra assist. Yeah, it would have yep. been a pretty good odds on it, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah, Jim needs to, uh, so Tony, Jim needs to tear that piece of paper up and burn it. That's what he needs to do with that. No foul piece of paper. <laughs> I mean, obviously, on things like wolves and war dancers, you're legally obliged to foul them. Um, bulls, of course, AB9 and Thick Skull, it's less good, but I'd have done it anyway. I'm a little bit surprised to see a chorf team in this format. With the rule set, um, it really didn't favour the likes of wood elves and chorfs. I, I looked at multiple chorf builds. Um, because I'm partial to playing chorfs myself, mm -hmm. and I just I just couldn't come up with a build I liked. As um, am I, I would actually describe them as my favourite race. Um, but in NAF, they just you always build something. And you look at it and you think, ah, yeah, but ugh. I mean, the bulls, yeah, you can't have two skills on both. And if you put two skills on either, you're really short of skills elsewhere, and you yeah. definitely can't then have a claw mighty. Yeah. Now, some would say you don't perhaps need one and you could move the claw from that mighty blow dwarf perhaps still keep the mighty blow but move the claw to a guard break tackle bull yeah um, which would be very very strong <coughs> but then you're going to lack you're going to feel you lack hitting that was available to you but I, I think claw might be a bit of a lie in that format you know what as much as i'm partial to a nice bit of claw palm and claw mighty i think uh, i agree with you in this format i don't think it's as effective as your heart tells you. Does that make sense? You know, yeah, yeah, whenever totally. you say to anyone Claw Mighty, you're like, oh, yeah, you rub your hands together and you start dribbling. Um, but in this format, I mean, not imagine how much fan. stronger this team would look with, for example, the sure hands replaced with a block break tackle. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that yeah. dwarf just dropped to Mighty Blow. Yeah. Um, or the sure hands just changed to block and then a guard break tackle ball. It goes where it wants, it's strength four, and it's got guard when it arrives. I mean, how yeah. lovely is that? Yeah. Uh, all for the cost of, I mean, 
yes, Claw is fantastic. It's ex it's absolutely brilliant with Mighty Blow, but Mighty Blow is going to be useful, I would say, in more formats against yeah. more other teams. Now, ironically, in this particular group, facing three dwarf teams, he should be expecting to get work out of it. Uh, and he did get his Hobgoblin back. We are 11 v 11. Yeah. Now, that perfect defense, obviously screwing with Jim. Not massively, I don't think. Um, it's just going to limit his hits and annoy yeah. him. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting he chose to advance there, right into the teeth of these... Uh, these Chaos Dwarf blockers. I'm not 100% about that as a good decision. What, with Frenzy? Oh, um, you mean the long beard, sorry, not the... Yeah. <laughs> I know to support the, uh, to support the Frenzy yeah. hit. Yeah. But I might have been tempted to take that Frenzy hit at the end of the turn, because we are right under the gun now, and one of those is AV8. However, that's still the right blitz. Yeah, taking advantage of that, even on the one in nine, it's our hit. And the stun's fabulous. The line held far enough in front of the ball that we've avoided what is called the bobble cage by some, where the defense for the ball pickup is right in front of it, and that way if you fluff the pickup, it also bounces on someone else's head and flops right over onto the enemy's side. Yeah, yeah. But I like that turn ordering, and I like the fact that Jim's just left one of his scum dwarves on the uh, blockless bull. That's asking for that one in nine fail. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tying down these bulls, trying to get one of these bull centaurs out of position. So right now, the one on the left-hand side could very easily become isolated and out of position, you know, with some kind dice. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Ironically, I actually try, I tried that a little bit with the Treeman. Unfortunately, with the Treeman, when I played in Arian, every time they hit me, they removed me. <laughs> yeah, I spotted that. Um, we may have mentioned it once or twice. Don't watch the VOD. Yeah, um, no, no, I, I did, and and you were right, but I again. But if you watch choice, when I yeah, played in Ari, and I, I did exactly the same thing. There yeah. are turns where you need to control where those trees go to and what they can do. Yeah. So there are turns to base it. It's obviously yeah. a lot easier strategy to put into place if you've got AV nine and things gone. Yeah, I think um, um, I think actually the rest of the division will be quite happy watching Inarian Inarian play me because that's going to be a strategy. He's got no qualms about GFI and with trees. No. Um, you know, so you've of all you've, the games, it's the one I'm thrilled to have got done, yeah, and to not have got done whilst getting it done, yeah. Um, it's a, such a banana skin, it it's is actually isn't it? a really strong build that's got all sorts of options built into it. Well, it's an, um, it, it's a build designed to nerf his opponent, you yeah. know, that and and it's horrible as a result, it really is. And um, if you manage to beat it, who's gonna go, oh, that was brilliant, well done. Exactly. That's just never going to happen, is it? Yeah, you get the, oh, look, Halcyon beat Flings, ooh, you know, and you're like, hang on a minute, it was Anarian, you know, with this with this sort of nerf build of his. I, 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 I love Anarian, I think he's an amazing player. Um, yeah, there are some surf options on here. Um, oh, no, okay, no. Uh, no, the Hobbo's in the way, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, the Hobbo is in the way. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. Now, Jim's got some options here, though. He, I mean, he can take the other bull down. There's some lovely hits on that. But that stunned guard means that the Claw Mighty and the one next to it are a real strong point in the middle of this defense from the Chaos Dwarf side. Yeah. He's going nowhere he's going this turn, is he? He's going nowhere. Through them. You could head up the flank. You can uh, use the Slayer to actually push the guard bull infield. Um, that would be, be too rowdy for Jim, wouldn't it? That'd be really way too rowdy. <laughs> this early and he is going to go through the other bull i think that's yeah. a strong place to go well it also means he centralizes as well doesn't it and i think that's a really good idea right now to to get that ball center pitch you okay we are him. yeah we're we're going for the uh the claw mighty so he's i love that i love, I love yeah. said, no no you're not having your strong sp space yeah i love that because in the snow if you you know if you put that blocker even prone there's nothing he can do I sort of talked that in then, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're right. He's not going to do a go for it just to get a hit. But uh, with a push off, he's definitely getting a hit somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that guard stands straight back up and allows two hits of the two dwarves that are in contact. I mean, three if he wants to, 
to use diagonal blocking. I mean, two of them would be with hobgoblins. But hits are hits. Yeah. <clears throat> and he probably should, because then the other one can get a, a sexy little push on the blitzer if there is a push here. Yeah, so from this position, there's some, uh, some chain dice availabilities. Yeah. Again, I'm not convinced by that advance. If we don't knock the other dwarf down, that's another piece that's going to be both controlled and hit. Yeah, and I'm not sure about going with the claw pump because, as I said, the uh, the hobgoblin here could have chained the other bull out to a position where it got a sexy hit. Yeah. But oh. Dio may have a plan I haven't seen. And it has left that claw mighty free to do a lot of hitting next turn. Two sex, mate. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, so they thought the one in nine did come from the Hobgoblin, but uh, luckily for Dio, it isn't a push. He did get it down in the end. And are we just blitzing this dwarf that's out on the edge on its own and abandoning our bull to get smashed? It seems that that is the plan. Okay, we're one dying the mighty blow. No, we're one dying the Blitzer, so that we can two die the other Blitzer. Hmm. I wonder if Dio's had his heal today. I, I didn't love a lot about that round. Oh, the Hobgoblin gets away with the hit from the Mighty Blow Dwarf. Jims will be annoyed about that. Sorry about that, PC. That's um, all right. I, I did right. So did I just see Dio do a one D there? Surely yeah. he had better options than than the one D. He had many better options than the one D. Um, what what I think he was going for there was he, he only needed a push on it. I thought that was his his goal, and then he had two D with the blue with the blur, with the bull on the other blitzer. Um, but if it had been a push, then any kind of push on those 2D from the Blitzer again just promotes Jim's Blitzer into a better position. Uh, I didn't like that plan at all. I didn't like that, that turn. And I felt there were sexier things that could have been achieved. Yeah. Um, as I pointed out, the chain push after the first set of push dice uh, actually led, if it had been done with the Hobgoblin, to pushing the bull out. Uh, and then it would automatically have had some, uh, some dice back and have let us Blitz with the Claw Mighty. So I felt that was stronger, but uh, terrible dice are still going to not help, no matter how good the blocking strategy is. Uh, and Dio's dice certainly not living up to what he wanted there. Yeah, they, they haven't been great, have they? Dio's no. block dice have been poor. <laughs> yeah, but Jim's, you know, that turn from Jim, again, nothing much achieved. No, no. To put it mildly. Yeah, and that's why we need the Claw Mighty to Blitz, so that we can get the pieces in exactly where we want them. I suppose what you could say from Dio that turn is that he tried to free some stuff up, but he left way too much in, in contact, and it wasn't a very aspirational turn. Again, a little unusual from him. Putting the Bull Centaur on, on the far left there, mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I was thinking about repositioning the Bull Centaur centre, centre pitch behind the line of the LOS line. Um to make yeah, sure I think if you feel like up. a threat, there's a time to do that. But weirdly, Dio's all over this drive right now in terms of the position. Yeah. Uh, and, and having the strength four out there without the Slayer having access to it means you have to put a lot of resources into moving it or taking it down if you want to go past it. And yeah. two of those yeah. resources probably aren't going anywhere <laughs> afterwards. So it's, I really think it locks that wing down. At the moment in the center, there's a lot of Chaos Dwarves, uh, all in a big old line. So that's a worry for Jim. Uh, and out on the other flank where he did have control of that downed Hobgoblin, he's suddenly, you know, outnumbered. I'm not surprised we're seeing the side, side swap from the Dwarves here, but there's a little bit of an issue, it has to be said. Jim really needs to chip a piece or two here, doesn't he? He really needs a chip It here. would certainly help. And that was another <laughs> Hobgoblin he hit, so I think that's what appealed to him about that plan. Yeah. And frustratingly, not, not breaking the Hobgoblin's armour. Yeah. 
two and a two, so it's fine that it was a push, except to leave him on the Hobgoblin. And there we go. Gets the chip that his heart desired. Yeah, the Apo there is fine as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's the perfect spot for an Apo in the second yeah. half. Increasingly, I'm doing that in the first half in NAF style as well. If it, I mean, just if it's a piece I think will be relevant, let alone if it's a good one. Yeah. We're, certainly with the lack of access to babes, you know, um, using an Apo for a KO is so good. It's just really good. Now, there's a right and a wrong. No, that's again terrible blocking pattern there from Jim. Had he uh, had he risked the one die with the other dwarf, uh, and a push would be fine on it. Okay, if he's putting the blitzer in there, he still gets this two die, but it leaves himself on a chorf. Whereas if he takes it in the other direction and the one die works, he can advance, yeah, and then uh, block everything off. Although I suppose this also limits mobility, which in the snow is good if he is genuinely trying to come up this right hand flank. And it's probably time he did. So, okay, yeah, I, I think that's okay. So, is this troll slayer going to pay for giving up a two D? <laughs> it, <is a, laughs> it is with a hobo. But yeah, I mean, AV eight. You always worry as a dwarf coach. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, you're you're in a better position than me. But this is not where you want to see your troll slayers. Is is it? No, in this and yet it constantly is where they go because yeah. their their unreliable frenzy asses just won't do what they're told all the time. It's one of the reasons I run with one Troll Slayer, is that controlling one of them can be tough enough to keep it where you need it and to not have its AV8 being hit constantly. Controlling yeah. two is very, very tricky, although it does give you more threat on the sidelines because of their low speed. You need to, you know, having two means, just like the Bulls have been trying to do, you can control both sides of the field, one with each. Yeah. So now we're seeing that Bull centralised, but I mean, Jim's position has so crumbled that Dio can hold the whole other side with a single Hobgoblin. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't think Jim had a lot of choice but to take a side, given the strength of Dio. Oh, totally. Defense. And he's, I mean, it's still on here. Yeah. Which is why Dio is blocking for, blitzing for position rather than profit and joy. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, as I said, it's all about repositioning the Hobgoblin and then getting the bull up afterwards. Both coaches hey. showing their defensive chops here. Absolutely. Even if it's one in nines, you can probably even afford to take it, though you wouldn't. You'd re-roll because you've got three. And we're getting into the short turns, the dark hours of the game. Yeah. And there we are. Wing pretty much shored up. The, the big problem here is that there isn't even a guard piece that can flip around this uh, this downed chorf. The one that's just unstunned itself and go into that lovely gap between the two hobgoblins and allow the slayer to push the uh, the one nearest the line off, leaving the runners. And Unless the you roll a casual runner. GFI. <laughs> yep. So I said that's exactly. So that blitzer has to come around the edge. The reason he couldn't move the, the other dwarf first is that he has to have some pieces that can come with this, or the whole thing's not real and we'll just get sold yeah. next turn by the chorfs. I think Jim slightly pressed the fuck it button there with that GFI opening the turn in the snow. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, the flip side of that is that if it failed, his his fortress is secure still. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I mean, be no progress in the turn, but it probably wouldn't mean losing the ball. There'd be some ball pressure, sure, but... Yeah, it was a calculated fuck it as opposed to a full fuck it. When I, you know, He's got so. four turns left. It's snowing. He's dwarves. He has to seize space, and he absolutely yeah. is there. Oh, and this is super rowdy, though. That's either cost him a space or it's going to do a go for it. Oh, I thought he was turning that one up around the corner next to the So slider. did I. Yeah, so did I. And I was going to say that was very, very rowdy. But instead, he's put in the handoff threat. Well, that'll work. <laughs> If only there was, say, a claw mighty blow dwarf very near it that could quite easily get an assist and knock it over, then this whole move forward is in jeopardy. Oh, there is, isn't there? Gah! I see that. No, it's only if he overcommits to this and opens up the other diagonal. Because though both blitzers are still on that diagonal, one just about... Oh, no, only one is. I forgot the whole the downed piece was. But it isn't. It's up behind the... It was the one that did the cheeky go for it. Of course it was. Well, I felt it had to be done, but I thought if you're taking that risk, you perhaps need to take a little bit more of one. And this runner needed some 
protection up there. Doesn't get even broken. Just knocked over. That's pretty good result for Jim. I'm not sure Dio can risk standing this Chaos Dwarf up, the one that's uh, behind the Blitzer. No, because he'd get surfed. That being said, he's got to protect this Claw Mighty now because that Claw Mighty is in a surfable position. So there we go. There's the yep. There's the protection for the surf. Yep. The Chevron shield. He is standing that chaff up. I mean, it, I guess he just feels even if it gets surfed, it's nicely in the way. Again, that's just about controlling space. There's your safety ball, and now this hobgoblin presumably dodges off. No, it runs out of time. Well, or, okay, I'm going to be positive. It chooses to stay there, just gumming up the works further. Um, that's there one of Artemis' things, isn't it? Um, unnecessary dodges at the end of your turn, which then, you know, costs you a player. So I can hear yeah, Artemis like saying, don't dodge die. him. I'd have, no. uh, I'd have slayed the hobgoblin first and then had two die. And as you're slaying the hobgoblin now, that's definitely better. Yeah. I'm mean, afraid it's just definitely better. Who's to say what's right and wrong in Blood Bowl, but that was a mistake. He got away with it, though. I mean, it was only a 2+, plus, but it could have been a 1 in 36. Oh, there certainly are rights, and there certainly are wrongs in Blood Bowl. The problem is the dice can really <laughs> screw that equation up. <laughs> yes, that, that's a meme. That was said by a certain someone, and some of us are never going to let it go. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, that was just a total fuck-up. Not easy sometimes being told that you're shit at Blood Bowl. Trust me, I get it all the time. <laughs> okay, this is a this is a nice very turn. significant chip now. Yeah, yeah. Now this we is are a in nice a turn. squeaky bum territory. It is the full range of that runner in snow to get this touchdown in, but yeah. that is the sort of piece that can be a massive momentum shift. Chaos Dwarves clinging on to the single point that a draw will bring them. As the nail-biting end to this Blood Bowl match hooves into view. It's been such an interesting game. You know, really sort hard. of control and strategy and tactics-wise, hasn't it? You yeah, know, very, uh, very solid defensively from both coaches. Yeah. Um, You'd have to say that on the balance of the game, Jim's had a lot more of the momentum in his direction. Oh, without a doubt. Um, I think Jim's block dice have been significantly better. You know, um, Dio's block dice have been largely trash. Um, on another day, that Claw Mighty is going to tear through dwarves like a hot knife through butter. Um, on this occasion, it's been about as useless, you know, as useful as a fart in an astronaut suit. So, yep. you know, there is that. A big stun on that runner there. It's not taking any vital part in this uh, in the rest of this drive. By the time it unstuns, it won't have the range to be a threat. So the only scoring threat right now for these dwarves is that this runner somehow finds a route through. I mean, theoretically, you've got the two blitzers as well, but their paths look really tricky right now. That's a really handy push on that blitzer because I was yeah. considering that blitzer possibly being a scoring threat. Yeah, um, I mean, it, you know, there, there was three dice if that hadn't been moved easily available on this bull. Uh, and then that blitzer did have a blitzing route through that chorf. Uh, I still think we may see exactly that plan happen just to give a secondary option. That's always nice to see, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the kill on the bull is also going to exaggerate that as a good plan. Uh, not just actually, weirdly, for removing the piece, but removing the block to people running through that area. As much as anything else, not having the body on the ground really helps. Massive apologies, chat. I've been so engrossed in chatting to PC, and I do love a good conversation with PC. I've actually not been paying any attention to the chat whatsoever. Um, <laughs> no, neither have I. <laughs> but then this moves at such pace. Yeah. I mean, I do occasionally look over and see people say things like big stun and think, yeah, I should say that. Um, I actually don't know if they said it before me. Uh, yes, it is absolutely a regen format, a Le Mans Russe Soir. It's uh, basically NAF style, uh, but to blitz pit times. 
built so if you steal the format from Blitzpit with the rule pack from uh, Tackle Zone Star Divisions and your build from Purple Chest, you get what you have in front of you today. I am certain in my heart that Jimmy is as capable of coming up and deciding that this would be his dwarf build as I am and have done for many years before he did. Despite it differing quite markedly from a standard dwarf build in NAF. Okay, so that's really nice from Jimmy. He's got himself in range. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I can say about it. He just needs to be pushed out of range, and that just takes cancelling so the dwarf. Do you go for, yeah, do you go, for, do you go for a push on a 1D? Um, or do you try to... Because it's going to be a dodge, isn't it, to cancel the dwarf? As I am. That's a 3+, plus and I've got a reroll. So, yeah, that's a 1 in 9 that I push him out of range, and I get yeah. the draw. Yeah. Because that's all I need. The blitzer isn't in range. Nothing else can be pushed easily into range. So yeah. that would be my next thought is getting sure that everything, you know, even if I take fails, that I haven't got anything that can be pushed. But yes, I take the 1D here. No yeah. point doing a 3 plus just to cancel it and make it 2D when you've got the reroll. First one's a skull. <laughs> and rerolls to another skull. So Jim has a. One in nine, one in nine, but each of them only has a single reroll to cover it to win this game right now. He did push through that space, did just enough yeah. rowdy go for it in the snow that he has win conditions. There are no dice, though, until they get shoved straight up your rectum. And as I said, chipping that bull's body meant there was a route for this runner to run through and take this position. Yeah. That may not have been there otherwise with, that, with the body in the way. Um, Huge equity swing there. Oh, what a Makes look at dog. What it's a, a look at dog. <laughs> I'm disgusted. He needed, that was a one in nine for him not to push you out of range, Jim. I know it was, yeah. I was, as soon as I didn't make the second gear find the runner, I'm like, fuck me, I'm an idiot. But, um, you know, who gives a fuck when you're, when you're a lucky idiot, right? <laughs> but if you had done, it was less hard to make it at least a one die. The two die would have been much more available, probably. So, yeah. I didn't hate it. It was so tough, the position you were in, that to get any winning shot at all, I thought was good. But yeah, it was just a one in nine to stop you. But it one in nine. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> He'll be fine with that, because sometimes in Blood Bowl, things like one in nine happens. Yeah. Uh, the point he'll look on is that he still made the right decision, despite it not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very, I was very lucky, obviously. If you want to be part of Team Positive uh, over over the whole uh, match, right? Suck it up. Multiple yeah, I mean, KO didn't, didn't take any. Yeah, Kelsey and I, no, Kelsey and I both felt you had the better dice. Yeah. Uh, the removals came just about at the right time in the second half, but the early one in the first half was really key there. Yeah. Uh, yeah but huge. you coached, you know, coached a good game to have him pretty penned in. Uh, he never looked like having a realistic shot at scoring. But then second half, I felt he positionally dominated. I, I, he did. His yeah. dice, I think, were a little bit better. I thought, but he took real advantage of the position. Walled up really well. I still think there was a turn he could have got some better hits in that he chose some odd blocking patterns. But uh, I felt he'd done enough that you don't get what you uh, deserve in Club Bowl. <laughs> yeah. The 1D, by, 1D served by mistake. The no foul on turn eight. Yeah. As soon as I did them, I'm like, oh, fuck moron. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, you absolutely <laughs> should have thrown that foul in turn eight. I mean, it was long yeah. odds, but it still should have been thrown. Yeah, exactly. The one die surf when the next thing you did was hit the hobgoblin with the slayer. I just thought they had guard. You know how it is, PC. You, you yeah. play dwarves. You're, you're, yeah. like, you're like, I'll just do this. They don't all have guards. And you're like, what? He doesn't have guard? What kind of dwarf is this? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah, 12 AV breaks to five, and he had claw mighty. Um... Like, obviously, some of my guys had Claw sometimes against his Hobgoblins, isn't it, essentially? I didn't feel you chipped the Hobgoblins you probably felt was your due. I mean, you'd hit them several times, particularly with the Mighty Blow, and it yeah. just never seemed to do much with the Hobgoblins. Yeah. And then you just killed a bull casually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah got well played, Jim. Well played. Thanks, thanks. I mean, yeah, I think, I, in fairness to myself, I think I did play quite well on the defensive drive. And, yeah, I did uh, too. But then you I both think, did. Yeah, you yeah. Um, there was, I don't think there was anything skill-wise between the two of you, but obviously um, I, I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying that your block dice were significantly better uh, than Tyro's. 
you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I thought both defences were beautifully played. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, you on top resources and Dio, whilst losing resources, both played really song slow defences. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, his dice were horrific. His dice were but, but I do, I, I think that was one for the defensive purists, that game. Um, he can't help that that didn't work. You know, he had yeah. eight out of nine shots of stopping the touchdown. Yeah. And he didn't. You know, that didn't happen. That is blood bowl. That's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, he's now going to have to mash me, uh, which is interesting. And uh, it's well. funny Dio should say that because that's my intention as well. I'm going to take your <laughs> status oh, and it straight you. up your ass. Seriously. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. Um, <laughs> it is Blood Bowl. That could happen. Uh, that's the joy of this game. Even yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet your house on me doing things. it, of course. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> it's the joy of Blood Bowl. And, that you know, some reason some people hate it is extraordinarily unlikely things do happen. All the time. Oh, that's fight. That's fight and talk where I come from, isn't it? <laughs> eh? <laughs> I don't know what you think I was implying. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing that the claw mighty you're putting two skill like the thing is yeah. like the mighty's okay because you're putting one skill on it and it, it's your guy who's blitzing every turn and if he doesn't if he doesn't make removals it's not that bad. When you're putting claw mighty and you're allocating two skills to it, he has to make removals to make it worth it, doesn't it? So that's that is it claw mighty putting two skills on a guy for, for yeah, it's, yeah. It's rough, yeah. It's yeah, I mean I, I was saying that during the commentary Dio, I'm sure you weren't listening along during the commentary. I mean, you definitely wouldn't do that sort of thing. Um, I did say that I think, despite it being so attractive, so good in the uh, against other bashers, that actually I would take the claw off and I would put it as a second skill on one of the bulls. And uh, I certainly wouldn't have a sure hands, but I think that's insane. Um, but having either a, a block break tackle bull or a guard break tackle bull is so, so strong in this format until the rules change and for some reason break tackle gets nerfed yeah. but I think that's where if you can stack on Chaos Dwarves I think it has to be on the Bulls yeah. I have a lot of respect for Dio taking Chorfs in this format because they didn't shape up well you know he could have been an absolute shithead and chosen Dwarfs but he went <laughs> with something you know a little or bit more humans. Or humans uh, I like humans you know I tried to change my Blitz Pit team from Dwarfs to humans I deleted the Dwarfs and forgot yeah, yeah. to make the humans <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I do think the uh, the human build, as, as we said again during the game, not dissimilar to yours, Calcium, uh, I'd take the block off the ogre and pop it as a guard on one of the catchers. Yeah, I, I would might even well. strip it. I might even strip it off the uh, thrower and put it as block on another catcher. Yeah, because I, the I liked, AVA is so so sexy. I liked um, I liked Shawnee's build with the just max guard, just guard on the ogre and guard on a catcher. Um, but there's, there's yeah, lots I mean, of things I, you can do. I isn't definitely there? think guard on the catcher is good. Uh, yeah. If I had anything on the ogre, it would probably be guard, yeah. Because then I'm not looking to hit with it ever. Trust me, the last game I played with my friggin' ogre, I wish I'd given <laughs> a hatch a guard, honestly. Yeah, because it, it couldn't be relied on, and that, yeah. that's the issue with big guys. Yeah. That said, a block ogre is probably the the big guy I would consider in NAF with some builds. Yeah, it, um, it was... Because if I didn't have AB8 catchers, that does change one of these questions, doesn't it? Yeah, it was least ri least amount of risk with a big guy, and obviously if your big guy decides to do things for you during the course of a game it can be really really massive but i uh, looking at shawnee's build shawnee's build is the best you know I, I don't think there's a lot between the human builds but i would say mine is the third best build um you know i i, I really prefer shawnee's and is there there is enough human build in there there's um yeah Gadinix, he's gone block on the throw yeah. but guard on the catcher so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mind going block on the thrower. I, you know, yeah. makes him a little bit more resilient. Um, and because that's basically what I did. But yeah, in hindsight, maybe not a skill on the. I ogre. just think a blodge move eight av eight is really strong too. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, for potatoing the ball, even if it's strength two. Um, I do like guard on the ogre. I think that's fine. I, I mean, I don't mind block on a ball carrier, obviously. And as um, Kelsey was saying, he's using it a bit like I use block on the runner, also as a safety as well as the ball carrier. So it is. It's a good multi-purpose skill. I mean, you know, this is a news flash, isn't it? Block equals good skill. Yeah, but guard so also good skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I really do love Shawnee's guard build. Anyway, before, I'm going to have to end the YouTube stream here because this was just meant to be a game. <laughs> so, <laughs>
Um, thank you very, very much, PC and Calcium, for jumping on and saving Pleasure. me. That, that turn was horrible, wasn't it, when I did all the talking? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much, guys. And, of course, you know, thanks, Dio, as well. He, he did play really well. He made the second half so hard. And, uh, you know, I had to get really lucky to win that. Really, even even down to turn eight itself was really lucky. Um, so yeah, con you know, well played to him. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>